Hello everyone. Welcome to Analog Communication Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to discuss on narrowband frequency modulation. Please note, in my previous video, I have derived expression for the time domain representation of a single tone frequency modulation. That video will be a prerequisite for this video. So, I highly recommend you to watch that video before you continue with this one. You can watch that video by clicking on the link shown in the top right corner right now, or I will leave the link of the same in the video description below. Let us start the discussion on narrow band frequency modulation now. Let us consider a single tone frequency modulated signal, which is given by S of t equals AC into cos of 2 pi FCT plus beta into sin 2 pi fmt, where AC is the carrier signal amplitude, FC is the carrier signal frequency, beta is the modulation index, and FM represents the modulating signal frequency. If you look at the RHS of this equation, you can see it is in the form of cos a plus b, where 2 pi fct can be considered as a and beta sin 2 pi fmt can be considered as b. Let us now use the trigonometric function cos a plus b, which is equal to cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. Let me now use this equation 2 into RHS of equation 1. Therefore, the single tone frequency modulated signal will become S of t equals AC into cos A, which is cos 2 pi FCT, into cos B, which is cos beta sin 2 pi FMT, minus of AC into sin A, which is sin 2 pi FCT, and sin B, which is sin beta sin 2 pi FMT. I would like to recall one of the important points I had discussed in my previous video which is if the modulation index beta is less than one radian, then the frequency modulation that is created is called narrow band frequency modulation. Now, since we are discussing the narrow band frequency modulation, let the modulation index beta be considered less than one radian. Let us recall the trigonometric property when theta is very, very less than one, cos theta can be considered equal to 1 and sin theta is equal to theta itself. I'm going to use these functions in the equations here. So cos of beta into sin 2 pi fmt is approximately equal to 1 and sin beta sin 2 pi fmt is equal to beta sin 2 pi fmt itself. Please note I have used these trigonometric functions to deduce these solutions. Let me now substitute the values for cos beta sin 2 pi fmt and sin beta 2 pi fmt into equation 3. So equation 3 reduces to s of t approximately equal to ac cos 2 pi fct multiplied by 1 minus ac sin 2 pi fct multiplied by beta sin 2 pi fmt. Let me now simplify this. This will be ac cos 2 pi fct minus of AC into sine 2 pi FCT into beta sine 2 pi FMT. In the next step, I'm going to group AC and beta. So if you look at this particular term, this is in the form of sine A sine B. Also, you should note equation five, which is this particular equation here, defines the approximate form of narrow band frequency modulation signal produced by the sinusoidal modulating signal, which is AM into cos 2 pi FMT. Let me now come back to the second term in the RHS here, which is in the form of sin A sin B. We know that sin A sin B equals 1 by 2 into cos A minus B minus cos A plus B. Let me now substitute this equation into the previous equation. So S of t would become, the first term here is written as it is, no change, minus of. Now, in place of sin A sin B, I'll substitute 1 by 2 cos A minus B minus cos of A plus B. So it will be AC into beta 
1 by 2 cos 2 pi into fc minus fm minus cos 2 pi fc plus fm. Now I'm going to interchange the positions of these two terms here so that I can remove this minus symbol. When I take this term to this particular place, then it will be minus of minus, so you will get a plus here. And when I move the second term here to this place, then I'll get minus here. This equation here is the time domain representation of a narrow band frequency modulated signal. Let us now recall amplitude modulation, particularly the standard amplitude modulation and the signal for the same is given by S A M of t equals a c cos 2 pi f c t plus a c into beta multiplied by 1 by 2 cos 2 pi f c plus f m plus cos 2 pi f c minus f m. Please note equation 7 represents n b f m which is narrow band frequency modulation and equation 8 here represents amplitude modulation. By comparing equations 7 and 8, we note that in the case of sinusoidal modulation, the basic difference between an amplitude modulated signal and a narrow band frequency modulated signal is the algebraic sign of the lower sideband frequency in the narrow band FM. That is, if you look at the AM, which is equation 8, in the third term we have a plus where the third term itself represents the lower side band and in case of narrow band FM, the change appears only in the form of a minus symbol before LSP. This is the basic difference between narrow band frequency modulation and standard amplitude modulation. So, if I talk about the transmission bandwidth of narrow band frequency modulation as well as amplitude modulation, I will find that the bandwidth required is equal to 2 times the maximum frequency of the modulating signal which is represented by FM. Please note this equation applies to both narrow band frequency modulation as well as amplitude modulation. In my first video when I was talking about an introduction to angle modulation, I have already discussed that the modulated signals can be considered as phasors. Let us now look at the phasor representation for both narrow band frequency modulation as well as amplitude modulated signals. Figure A here shown at the top represents the phasor for narrow band frequency modulated signal. Here the carrier signal which is shown here as the x axis is considered as the reference signal. Then the upper sideband frequency is shown here, this is the USB and the lower sideband frequency is shown at 90 degrees here and the resulting sum of frequency phasors is shown here which is in right angle with the carrier signal. Now let us understand what is the effect of this 90 degree phase difference between the carrier and the sum of the frequency phasors which is shown at right angle with the carrier signal. The effect of this is to produce a resultant phasor that represents the narrow band FM signal which is this one that is approximately of the same amplitude as that of the carrier signal but it is out of phase with respect to the carrier itself. So I can summarize that in narrow band frequency modulation the amplitude of S of t is approximately equal to the amplitude of the carrier signal C of t. Further, S of t and C of t are out of phase with each other. Coming to the second phasor diagram shown here, this is please note for amplitude modulation. Once again, if we analyze this, this is our carrier and this is our upper sideband frequency and this is our lower sideband frequency. Once again, it should be noted the angle between upper sideband and lower sideband is 90 degree. However, for amplitude modulation, the sum of the side frequency phasors which represents the modulated signal is in phase with the carrier signal itself. So, I can summarize for amplitude modulation, amplitude of the modulated signal S of t is not equal to the amplitude of the carrier signal C of t. However, 
S of t and C of t, they are in phase with each other. Let me now continue and plot the spectra for narrow band frequency modulated signal. For that, I would like to recall equation 7, which is given here. Now, let me expand the terms in the second part of the RHS here. That is, I am going to multiply AC into beta 1 by 2 to each of the terms inside. So, I would get AC beta 1 by 2 into cos 2 pi Fc plus Fm. Please note, this represents the upper side band. Then, we have minus AC beta 1 by 2 into cos 2 pi Fc minus Fm. This represents the lower side band. In fact, equation 10 is the final version of the representation of narrow band FM signal in time domain. To plot the frequency spectra for this, I will have to take Fourier transform on both sides of equation 10. Before that, let me now show you what are the Fourier transforms of each of the three different terms in the RHS of equation 10. Coming to the first term here, AC cos 2 pi FCT. The Fourier transform of AC into cos 2 pi FCT is AC multiplied by 1 by 2 into delta F minus FC plus delta F plus FC. This is directly taken from the relation Fourier transform of cos 2 pi FCT is given by 1 by 2 into delta F minus FC plus delta F plus FC. So, the only extra term here is AC. So, AC is multiplied with this output here. Coming to the second term, look at this particular part. This is cos 2 pi Fc plus Fm. So, I have to go back to the RHS of this equation here and simply in place of Fc, I will replace that by Fc plus Fm. So, the answer would be AC beta divided by 4 because there is already a 2 here. And then in the RHS, we get delta F minus of Fc plus Fm plus delta F plus Fc plus Fm. In a very similar fashion, for the third term, we get the same answer except we have here a minus. So, the answer would be AC beta divided by 4 delta F minus Fc minus Fm plus delta F plus Fc minus Fm. I have shown all of those representations here, assuming I have taken Fourier transform on equation 10. The first term here represents AC cos 2 pi Fct. Then we have the second term here and the third term. This equation 11 represents the frequency domain representation of the narrow band FM signal. Now, to plot the spectra, I need to identify the frequency components available in the equation for S of f. Let me start with the first term here. The first frequency component is fc, then we have the other polarity of fc, I will assume that to be minus fc. Then I have plus fc plus fm minus fc plus fm and lastly plus fc minus fm and minus fc minus fm. So, the frequency components present would be plus or minus Fc, comma, plus or minus Fc plus Fm and plus or minus Fc minus Fm. These are the frequency components that will be available in the amplitude spectra of narrow band frequency modulated signal. Please note, you should be careful in selecting the amplitudes. For example, plus or minus Fc have an amplitude of AC by 2. So, I will write it here. It is AC divided by 2. Plus or minus Fc plus Fm has an amplitude of AC into beta divided by 4. And plus or minus Fc minus Fm has an amplitude of AC into beta divided by 4. With this information, we can now plot the amplitude spectra for NBFM. And the spectra itself is shown in figure 2 here. The x axis is frequency axis. Please note this is the amplitude spectra. 
as we have previously noted down, we have a frequency component at plus Fc and minus Fc. We have the amplitude of that particular frequency component as AC divided by 2. So, you need to draw a impulse at Fc as well as minus Fc of amplitude AC by 2. Then you have frequency components at plus Fc plus Fm and minus Fc plus Fm. The amplitude of these impulses are AC into beta divided by 4 and these represent the upper sideband frequencies. And lastly, we have impulses at Fc minus Fm and minus Fc plus Fm and the amplitude of these impulses is once again AC beta divided by 4 and these frequencies represent the lower sideband. Let us now list out a few observations that can be made from the amplitude spectra of narrow band frequency modulated signal. The first observation is that the amplitude spectrum for NBFM shows there are impulses at plus CFC and minus CFC. These impulses indicate that there is a carrier term present and it is not suppressed in narrow band frequency modulation. The proof for such a claim can be made by looking at the equation for narrow band frequency modulation in time domain. If you look at the first term here, this is nothing but the carrier itself. So, in narrow band frequency modulation, the carrier is not suppressed. Moving on to the second observation, we see that there are impulses present on either side of plus or minus Fc. That is, you have Fc plus Fm, Fc minus Fm. Further, we have minus Fc plus Fm and minus Fc minus Fm. That is, we see that there are impulses present on both sides of plus or minus Fc and these impulses represent the lower and upper side bands respectively. As already discussed, the bandwidth requirement for such a signal would be Bt equals the upper side band frequency which is Fc plus Fm minus of the lower side band frequency which is Fc minus Fm. So, this would be equal to 2fm as already said. Lastly, we also find that even though narrow band fm signal is very similar to that of standard amplitude modulator signal, we find that in narrow band frequency modulation, there is no amplitude variation. This is an important point to note because we have previously compared the time domain representation of narrow band frequency modulation and standard or conventional amplitude modulation signals and we find that they are very similar to each other except for the polarity of the lower sideband frequency. Now, I want to specify something very important here which is the polarity of the frequencies for the lower sideband which is minus Fc plus Fm and plus Fc minus Fm. As per the equation of the time domain representation of narrow band FM, the polarity is said to be negative. But here we have not considered the polarity because the spectra itself is for amplitude. We call this spectrum as amplitude spectrum and hence the polarity of the lower sideband frequencies is neglected. Right. With that, we complete this discussion on narrow band frequency modulation. In my next video, I will discuss on wideband frequency modulation. So, stay tuned. If you found this video to be informative, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on analog communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.